People in power want you to fear, so you never say things people should hear. You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's video is about Stanley Meyer. Now, he was a man with a brilliant mind that could invent the most magical things, and his ideas could have changed the world, but he never fully got the chance. Why, do you ask? Well, there are many strange theories surrounding his death. But first, we have to go back to what he did prior to that that would make him so dangerous in the minds of the government or people in power. By the way, I post so much content like this, so if you do enjoy it, all I ask of you is to show some support by thumbsing up these videos, leaving a nice comment down below, or sharing them if you want to, and yeah, let's get back to the story. So Stanley Allen Meyer was born with a twin, Stephen Meyer, and they were both born on August 24th of 1940. They grew up in Columbus and went to Ohio State University. Stanley only went there briefly before joining the military, but people described him as eccentric, persuasive, and he was 6'3" with a booming voice that just made everybody listen to him. He was charismatic and they would always, always build something between him and his twin they were always building and they even created their own toys when they were younger. His favorite phrase of all time was praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. So that just tells you a little bit about his personality. He once worked for Battelle Foundation which helps in the development and the research of science and technology for the greater good and he also helped with the development of the Gemini project for NASA which was the second space flight program. But that's not all he did. He also worked on the feeding system for energy or concept EBED for the Star Wars project and he also came up with his own company. They assembled an operation worth several million dollars transporting spare parts. He did that with his brother but funny enough he was also the kind of man that was very forgetful and in his work all the time and kind of more wrapped up with what he was doing than reality. He once called the bomb squad because he got a very suspicious package to his door. So the bomb squad showed up at his house, they detonated the package, only to find that it was actually equipment that Stanley had ordered for a project he was doing. But Stanley's work always was said to be very ahead of its time. He applied for more than 200,000 patents and a lot of his work was either, well most of his work, all of his work was either solely funded or funded all by himself. But in 1975 is when he began his work on the water fuel cell, which ultimately is what is theorized to have cost him his life. He began creating it during the Arabian oil embargo when Saudi Arabia ended up cutting the oil supply off from the United States and so the prices were getting increasingly higher by the day. The US was running out of oil and many companies were going bankrupt and losing tons of money because of this. The anxieties were high and Stanley was determined to do something about it. He said, it became imperative that we must try to bring in alternate fuel source and do it very quickly. He believed he could develop a water fuel cell and turn water into fuel so you, we could replace gasoline completely. The fuel cell would work by splitting atoms of water into its two basic forms, which would be two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen would be burned and then sent down to the car's wheels to give it energy, and then the oxygen and the remaining hydrogen would go out through the pipe exhaust. This meant that nothing would harm the environment either, and a few months in, he got it patented and he built a small buggy. Built with this fuel cell, run by water, and it worked. Stephen even claimed that it required less energy than the minimum that science claimed, and that he could drive cross country on 20 gallons of water from the tap. He began showing it at demonstrations all across the US and he once went on an Ohio TV station where he said he could get from LA to New York on 22 gallons of water. He said he replaced the spark plugs with the injectors that would introduce a hydrogen oxygen mixture into the engine cylinders. Most thought that this invention was revolutionary and incredible. But scientists believe that water as fuel would only ever be a myth. 
Lawyers began making allegations that it was illegitimate, it was all a scam, and witnesses were saying that it wasn't revolutionary whatsoever because it was simply using conventional electrolysis. And investors in this invention began saying that it was all just money laundering and demanding their money back. A man named William E. Brooks from Anchorage, Alaska had invested $300,000 in this water fuel cell and suddenly he wanted it all back. So in 1994, he got his settlement where he received all of it back. In 1996, he was also forced to give $25,000 back to two businessmen, but the man who defended Stanley in court said that he would never, ever defend a bum, somebody scamming people, and that he was a really nice guy. But two years later, on March 20th of 1998, Stanley went to eat at the Grove City Cracker Barrel with his brother and two Belgium investors. They raised their glasses and they took a drink and Stanley was drinking cranberry juice, but the minute he took a sip, he grabbed his throat and he ran out the door of the restaurant to the outside. He dropped to his knees and he began vomiting violently. His brother ran out after him, asked him what was wrong, and his last words were, they poisoned me and he died right after that. He was only 57 years old and his death sent the Grove City Police into this investigation that lasted three months of trying to find out the truth. They said that Stanley's death was laced with all sorts of stones of conspiracy, cloak and dagger stories. And interestingly enough, when Stanley's brother Stephen went to tell the Belgium investors the next day that his brother had died, they didn't say anything. No condolences, no questions just silence. And Stephen said he never trusted them again after that. But the police did do an autopsy on Stanley's body and the state of Ohio said that he died of natural causes. The coroner had determined that he had suffered from high blood pressure and that the real cause of death was a cerebral aneurysm. But the people who knew him believed it was something much darker. They believed he was murdered to suppress his inventions. They said that through, throughout his career, he had seen many visitors from overseas, government spying, and buyout offers for his inventions that just made them feel like he had something that others didn't want getting out or didn't want him to have the power of. I mean, he was recognized by national and international organizations, and in 1993, he was elected Inventor of the Year in Who's Who in America. He also had support from Canada, England, Sweden, and most say that they, people wanted to buy him out, including the US government, but he always refused. But it's odd because there were so many people who didn't believe in this water fuel cell invention whatsoever. There were so many negative reviews. So why did they want to still buy it out? Did they know something more than Stanley? Perhaps were they making those reviews come out? Were they more afraid of the power he would have or the money they would lose? But some do say, and I'm no scientist whatsoever, there could not have been a water fuel cell basically because water lacks energy so it couldn't be burned as fuel at all. And so people believe if that's the case, then his whole business, his whole invention was a scam and that he did it to get the money. And possibly if he did that, then maybe someone he scammed wanted revenge. Now you might be thinking if he died of an aneurysm, then how did somebody kill him? Well, you're correct in thinking there is no poison that can induce this effect. But when somebody is already on the brink of having an aneurysm, that's a whole different story. And it's thought that he was. Because a blood thinning agent like warfarin or rat poison can be very fatal for someone who already is on the brink of having an aneurysm, they can bleed out. But with all the people saying that his water fuel cell couldn't even be possible, there are also people who have tested it and say that it could be because by electrically splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen, you would use the hydrogen gas, which could become an energy. And apparently it's been tested that if you pump hydrogen gas into your Ford engine, that it will run just like gas and water vapor will come out of the exhaust. But to split water, you would still need batteries. And so it's still not free energy, but it would still lose the oil company's money. And would they kill to keep that from happening? 
probably. But what do you think really happened to him? I find it so weird that they would kill him so many years after he invented it, but if they wanted to get bad press for it, you know, make it known that this wasn't going to work so nobody would try it again, and then when he wasn't stopping, when he was just getting more and more investors, they realized it was time to off him before he did something bad and exposed everything. I don't know, but it just, it does seem odd that it's a little later, but I think he'd already been in danger for so many years if, you know, the government really was watching what he was doing. Or maybe he just made those Belgium investors that he was at lunch at angry. Maybe he was wanting way more money than they were willing to pay. Maybe he made them angry enough that they did it. But all of this kind of wouldn't be a very big conspiracy if he hadn't said those words, they poisoned me. And it makes some think Maybe he was just a paranoid guy that said those words because he was dying and felt like because he just took a drink, something had happened, someone had done it. I guess could be a possibility if you live your whole life, you know, in fear because of what you're doing is not necessarily what people want you to do. And then if something just happens out of the blue like that, if you don't know about your pre-existing condition that's inside your body, and something just starts to happen, maybe you would think, my God, they poisoned me, when really you were just dying naturally. Who knows, I think it's, it's a much crazier and kind of cooler, you could say, story if something did happen, if the government were involved because of what his inventions could do and how it could change the world. I say cooler, not in the fact that he passed away because, I mean, rest in peace, Stanley, but I think that he would have appreciated it more if he went out with a bang, with a with a conspiracy rather than just of natural causes. I think he would truly just love that, which maybe, maybe that was his thought as he was leaving this world, that he wanted to go out with a bang. Conspiracies surround his death to this day, but his fuel cell lives on. Toyota and Honda have actually started doing their own fuel cell models after his model and nothing exact to what his invention was, but they definitely were inspired by it. And it's strange because his patents have expired, so somebody could do his exact invention, but they haven't yet. And it's said that that's because he wasn't fully done with it either. And the secrets that he had, the stuff he kept to himself, would only possibly be known by his brother Stephen, who refuses to do any more work after seeing everything his brother went through. Which I think says a lot about how Stanley lived. A book called Water Car was published about his story, Stanley's story, and it said in there, He was ignored, called a fraud, and died without his small hometown even remembering him with so much as a plaque. That is true. I, I didn't know about him until I stumbled across him upon my research of another case and it was definitely something that seemed to be covered up for many different reasons. But are there any theories that you know of or that you thought of while listening to this? Because truthfully, it could just be as simple as he was paranoid or it could be as complex as Maybe he invented something more, or maybe he really did perfect the water fuel cell, and they couldn't let that happen. They being whoever you want to think is they. I don't want to be killed, so. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't think it's too far off that someone in power could want him to not have that power and could do something about it before he got it. We all know that by all the cases and the conspiracies that we research and learn about. I mean, People in power will do whatever it takes to keep that. Unfortunately, that's just how our sick world works. But I don't know, I thought that his story was very, very cool and very eye-opening. And I'm not sure, I'm not a scientist, like I said. I don't know much about if his invention could have worked. The idea of it is incredible. And if somebody could do that, it truly could change the world. But there are so many scientists that say, oh, that can only be a myth, that could never happen. That I'm not sure if anyone will really try, which is so unfortunate. I think if anybody tells you it's, it can only be a myth, you should just try harder to prove them wrong. And that, you sh that should go for anything in your life. If somebody tells you you can't do it, that is their opinion on what can happen, not yours. If you believe it, you can achieve it. And I'm getting too cheesy, so I'm going to stop now. But <laughs> if there's any other conspiracies or strange deaths with conspiracies around it that you want me to discuss, you can leave that down below. One of my favorites I ever did was Dorothy Kilgallen. She, she was a journalist who ended up dying of strange circumstances, and there's a lot of theories around her death. I'll link it if you want to watch that. But yeah, 
Anyways, make sure you are thumbsing up this video if you did enjoy it because it it really does let me know that you care about these cases, care how I'm presenting them, and it means the world to me, truly. So yeah, and if you're not subscribed, do that. And the post notification bell, on so you don't miss it next time. <laughs> Anyways, don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye. Sometimes the world isn't ready for all that you are, but never stop fighting no matter the number of scars.